I put together this topic because I get a lot of people asking me questions about uh, technical support and uh, how to do things. And I want to help people understand that there's a lot of resources on the internet uh, that are available to you. Uh, there's just a lot, a lot of things that are that you can utilize and, and take advantage of if you want to. Okay, so the question comes up, are you a systems integrator? A lot of people don't know that they are, that they've become one. Um, so as you buy different products from different companies, and different technology, we're talking mostly technology now. I mean, we always have things like a toaster or a blender uh, or other things, but we're talking technology, computers, laptops, other types of things that you might utilize that you're not familiar with so that you, your phone is now a smartphone, your printer, your television is now a smart television. You might have a voice assistant like Google Home or Amazon Alexa. You might have accessories that you plug into your computer. You've got car electronics uh, that you've got. And so there's just a lot of hardware. That's just the hardware. Uh, then you've got software, an operating system. If you bought maybe a Hewlett Packard or a Dell computer, you could have an operating system made by Microsoft. So you really have different piece of hardware and a different piece of software on the device. If you have a Samsung phone, you might have an Android operating system. Samsung does not make Android. Android is made by Google. You might have an email account from somebody different like Yahoo. Uh, or um, Hotmail or something like that. You might use a calendar from a different company. You might have a word processor from another company. You might have a web browser that you use from somebody else. Maybe you use some photo or video editing. I know the Video Producers Club uh, tends to use a, a software called PowerDirector, but there's others that are out there as well. And then you've got all the mobile apps that are on your smartphone as well. So uh, as you can see, it, it starts to get a little discouraging, all the ways the technology has kind of infiltrated our lives. And then you've got services on top of it. You've got your internet service, which is a different company probably. Um, your email service and your email account may be the same. Uh, you've got a bank that you do online banking with as a service these days. Uh, we don't need to go to the bank physically as much as we used to, but that's a service that we take advantage of. You're, uh, you might have a cloud. You might use a streaming service like Amazon Prime or Netflix. So to make all of this work together, there is only one person that is going to be responsible, and that's you, unless you pay somebody to make it all work together. And that can be really expensive. Now, the term systems integrator is a real job in the information technology profession. It exists because companies and businesses and schools and government agencies, they just can't run with technology just from one company. And so they buy different technologies and they hire people like systems integrator to make sure they all work together in one way. And, and that's something they pay for. And so professionals in information technology knows there's a price to be paid for things working together. Now, fortunately, most of the time, a lot of the common products do work together. And you can use, we talk about web browsers, you can use a Chrome web browser on a Mac or a Windows PC, and they work. You can use a Microsoft Word on a Mac or an Android tablet. So you can use a HP or Epson printer with a lot of different computers. So a lot of things do work together it's just a question of whether the company you're buying a product from has any knowledge or ability to support services or products or technologies from any other company you might use together. So your internet service provider, uh, I use Spectrum as an example. Uh, they know that it's important to connect a tablet, a smartphone, a computer, um, and maybe some other devices, but they probably have support information and knowledge on how to get a computer like a Mac or a Windows PC or an Android or an iPhone or a tablet from Apple or, or Samsung connected to the internet. The more offbeat technologies you have, they may or may not 
have technical support expertise to be able to help you. So the good news is that for the most part, the common products that we tend to buy and use day in and day out do tend to work together very often. Okay, so the next step is figuring out what are you trying to do? There's a difference between fixing a problem and learning how to do something. Learning how to do something means I don't know how to make this work. I don't know how to uh, register people for Zoom in a, in a Zoom meeting. I don't know how to change the font on a document. I don't know how to bookmark a website. That's, I don't know how. That's okay. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, fixing a problem means something's not working right. And it's, it, uh, you don't, it's not that you don't understand how to do it. It's just that when you try and do it, it's not doing it the way you think it should, or it's not doing it the way the product or the software or the service should be. It's like losing your internet connection. You know, that's a problem that, that you need help fixing, and you may or may not be able to fix that yourself. Uh, or uh, trying to email somebody and the email doesn't seem to go through. That's a problem. Okay, so there's a little bit of understanding there in terms of helping you diagnose things. And, and you all know, probably you've been to a, a doctor or physician, and when you first visit a, a doctor or physician and you ask them, uh, well, I have a pain in my shoulder, I have a stomach ache. Do they tell you how to solve the problem right away? No, no, they, they want to diagnose the problem. And so you can become better at doing your own technical support if you can start to diagnose the problem a little bit better, because then you can ask the right questions on, on the web or through a support site. So I kind of put together this little step-by-step -step chart. It's not going to work 100% of the time, but I used to run a computer repair business, and I've helped a lot of people trying to, to repair their product or fix something that's not working right. And there are a couple of standard answers that you will always get from technical support professionals. First of all, what's the product or software or service that you're using? What version of your software, what model number, of your device. So they want to know those things. And some support services are better at helping you figure that out than others are. But knowing it yourself is really good. So you could just keep a little notebook or keep a document on your computer that just says, I have a model XXX whatever, uh, or I'm using, you know, this software type of thing, particularly if it's not software provided by the company that gives you the product. The first step that almost every technical support line will tell you to do is to restart your hardware. Okay, uh, why do they do that? Well, when you restart your hardware, you actually load the software up from the storage fresh. And so sometimes that fixes a lot of problems. So if you have a bad internet connection, sometimes the internet service will say, well, let's reboot your router for you, okay? And sometimes they'll do it remotely, but they'll tell you to do that. On Windows 10, okay, restart your computer and see if that fixes the problem. And oddly enough, it does. It does fix it a lot of the times because a lot of problems are actually caused by the software, not the hardware. Hardware in technology either works or it doesn't work. It seems to fail devastatingly if it fails at all and says, oh, this isn't working at all, uh, or it, it has a little problem. And lots of times the problem is the software. Another question you'll always get if you call technical support is, are you running and have you installed the latest version of the software, the latest operating system, the latest version of apps? You'll always get that because sometimes that fixes bugs, but also installing a fresh version of the software will overwrite any other ver previous versions you have. It won't destroy your data, but it'll put a fresh version of the software on your device so that it might fix problems where the software might have become corrupted. Files can become damaged for a variety of reasons, or maybe there was a bug they fixed in the latest release. Uh, Apple just released version 14 of iOS, and within a few days, they released a bug fix called 14.0.1. And so that's why they tell you to install the latest version of software. And the next question 
you have to ask yourself is, are you under warranty? Do you have a service agreement or do you work with a local tech service or a technician? And if you do, you can contact support service or you can use what are called self-service options. Um, I was attending a recent seminar and they talked about how we live in a self-service society. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you don't have a warranty, a service agreement, or a local tech you pay, you're pretty much relegated to using self-service options. And so you have to ask yourself, am I good at that? Or do I need something a little better than that? And these are just personal questions you have to ask and kind of do a self-assessment of your technical proficiency. There are some different types of support that are out there. Manufacturers typically offer most of these, but not always. There's a warranty period. A warranty covers defects in workmanship. There's a support agreement that offers an extended warranty or something else. Uh, you can get extended warranty, but you can also get third party services that offer support agreements that aren't from the manufacturer, but they will cover your product. You can get per incident support, which means you pay or you get service based on a specific you know, time or a contact that you have. And I've seen people do this and get it remotely. And sometimes manufacturers offer that. Sometimes there's third parties do. Third party meaning it is not the company that made the software or the hardware or provides the service. And then there's self-service, which is available from a lot of places, okay? So increasingly, uh, companies want to try and direct customers to self-service options first, even if they're under warranty, because it saves them personnel and resource time to do it. But their self-service mm -hmm. options are getting really, really good. Okay, so you can get support in a variety of ways, okay? And you have to kind of decide on your own, which do you feel comfortable with and which do you prefer? I've used all of them, okay? So uh, you can get support on a website from a company or a third party or help from just experts in, in, uh, in different technologies. You can get live telephone support. You can get support via email. You can get support via live chat. I've used that and gotten very good response, sometimes faster than uh, a live phone call. There are screen share services with a live agent where they ask to take remote control. There are retail stores that offer support, both from manufacturers and third parties. And there's artificial intelligence tools out there that try and help you diagnose a problem. Uh, they're commonly used in what are called chatbots, where you aren't really talking to a live person, you're kind of describing your problem and they're using artificial intelligence to try and diagnose the problem for you and help direct you to a solution. The features of support can be impacted by availability. Do you want 24 by seven uh, or are you okay with eight to five weekdays. That's how fast do you want to get a response? Uh, do you get really frustrated if you can't get help within a few minutes? Or are you willing to wait the next day or even a few days for something? It depends on the issue. And always it, it depends on how critical something is to you. So you see somebody in, in business or uh, that's using this for uh, schools or trying to do something, they really need response times and availability that help them very rapidly. If you're, you know, teaching a class at a K through 12 school, for example, and you have a Zoom conference go down, uh, you got to get some answers about how to get back and working again. Those are, those are issues in terms of what's called critical or non-critical response. And critical costs more is, is what it is. Um, you can get remote support. We'll take a look at some examples on the web of companies that offer remote, but most of them offer remote support. They've been doing it for years, and, and so it's been very common, and they've built very robust tools and resources to be able to help people. There are on-site service options. They still exist, and they're still available uh, from a lot of companies. There are walk-in locations that exist at both manufacturers uh, retailers and third-party retailers. And although we're not 
able to travel to too many countries. I, I, I looked up uh, right now that uh, I think we can travel to, according to Kayak, we can travel to Mexico and Brazil without having to quarantine ourselves as Americans right now. But, but if you do travel offshore, and I'm hoping that that will become common uh, again and something we can all do soon, uh, think about whether you need support while you are outside of the United States or outside your local area where you might be, you know, use your technology. So those are factors that really come into thinking about what kind of support do I need and do I care about those types of things. And these are all personal uh, decisions that you have to make. Now let's talk a little bit about a warranty. Warranties are technically things that cover defects for a period of time. They're typically offered by the manufacturer or the brand name that makes whatever it is you purchased. They may or may not include live phone support or email or website. And every warranty is a little bit different. So companies and brands and organizations provide different levels of support. So it's always a good idea to ask a question, what is your warranty, you know, copy this down, you know, if you want to, and, and uh, just ask these questions. Does it include live phone support? How long does it last? What's the response time? Is it include product replacement or, or damage or anything like that? So these are all things that, that we are buying a warranty typically when we buy a product, but it's like, you know, taking an online, you know, signing up for a social network online, we get the terms and conditions, but we don't bother reading them in, in the fine print. But it always helps to ask these days, because if you depend on technology for your life these days, for a lot of things that you do, it really helps to understand what the warranty is. So that's warranty. Self-service is a very common do-it-yourself, but self-service is typically provided free of charge, even after warranty is available. Some self-service uh, is provided only within warranty, but it's a very, very common approach that for doing it yourself. Websites, and we're gonna take a lot, lot, look at a lot of websites. Chatbots, which are software applications that let you chat and get help and support. I used this with Spectrum recently, the Spectrum uh, app that I use for my Spectrum internet has a built-in chat function and it starts you out with a chat bot and it'll try and help you diagnose a problem uh, that you might be having with a Spectrum service and then it'll direct you to either a website for help or it'll recommend things or it'll tell you that, that you, you need to call the 800 number for support. There's YouTube. YouTube is a great place to go for support. A lot of manufacturers and products like Microsoft and HP and Apple and Dell and uh, Google and everybody have YouTube support uh, tools, resources. And YouTube is also probably the better resource for learning how to do something rather than a chatbot. A chatbot may not tell you how to do something. Uh, a website would and a YouTube channel would. Google search is great. You can ask a full question. You can ask a 20 word question in Google search and get help on something. It'll typically take you to either the manufacturer's website or a website by someone who publishes a lot of articles and information about it. And then there's some built-in diagnostic software. Some tools like Windows 10 and Microsoft, uh, Apple Macs provide diagnostic software in the operating system itself that can help you run and solve problems uh, that are available. You typically find these in, in settings and lots of times uh, they'll tell you to run a diagnostic if you call technical support, but that software is actually available to you. It's typically only used by technicians that know how to do it. So these are our self-service options that most of us have taken advantage of one way or another. There are also services that include support. So I mentioned Spectrum or Fios or others, the internet service providers, cellular services like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, others offer technical support. And sometimes they offer technical support for your device a little bit in addition to 
the actual service you purchase. If you ever need help with a online banking issue or a, a financial service that you use, you can get help from them. They, they provide a service and they offer support for that uh, as well. And then you can get support typically if you have paid subscription software like Microsoft 365, which includes Office, they've typically got support options built in as well. So your services are a resource for support that you may or may not utilize. Some of you probably have already. And then there are some retailers that offer free retail support. Depends on the product and the retailer. And I'm gonna show you all of these. The retailers that do offer free support, Apple is both a company that makes products and runs retail stores. Okay, so you can get support from Apple as a retailer for products you purchase through Apple. Apple sells a lot of accessories for their products through their retail stores that aren't made by Apple, but they will provide support for those products if you purchase them through the Apple store. It's not just for Apple products, but they're very selective in what they sell. But their retail support so stores, both online and in person, you can get walk-in support. Their Genius Bar has uh, got a great reputation. Microsoft has closed or is in the process of closing all of their physical retail stores, but they have a retail store online. And when you buy a product from Microsoft online, you are buying it through their online retail store and they offer support options for that. Costco, which most of you probably know, uh, has support for members. When you buy certain products from Costco, they actually give you Costco concierge service. That's what they call it, free for two years in addition to any manufacturer warranty. And we'll take a look at what Costco does for that. And they cover most of the electronic products they sell for that. Uh, there's another company you may not be familiar with. If you've ever bought photography equipment or audio visual equipment, there's a company called Crutchfield that offers support for your lifetime. As long as you own the product from Crutchfield, they will provide lifetime support for you. Now, they may not provide replacement, but they do provide technical support for it. So the warranty typically will cost, cover a replacement, but if you need help understanding how to use it or figuring something out or have technical questions about it, they will, they will help you for the lifetime of the product. And then cellular services, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Spectrum, they all run retail stores and they usually provide some technical support for products that they sell there in addition to their cellular services. So there's just a lot of support options out there. And part of it's the process is figuring out what is my problem? What is the product or service that's causing the problem? And where could I possibly go for support to solve that? Uh, because that's, these companies want you to be satisfied with their products because they want you to buy more products from them. Well, let's take a look at all the support websites that are out there because boy, there's a lot of them. Let me go back to my screen sharing and share my Safari browser here. There's no, no particular reason why I'm using Safari. It just happens to be the one that, that I have up. So on my website and in the article and email I sent you, I sent you a link to an article that says how to find good technical support on the internet. I talk a little bit about these things and what they do, but at the bottom, I've listed links to support websites that I found on there. And obviously it doesn't cover everything because there's just a lot of technology, but, but some of the ones I mentioned, we'll take a look at each of these sites to see what it is they do and how they do it, okay? So let's look at Apple first, uh, and not, not because there's something that's really important or special, but Apple does have a good reputation about technical support. So Apple's technical support is a link, and you can always tell if you're going to the manufacturer's website or not, because if you look at their, their information on, it'll say apple.com or microsoft.com or google.com in the address of the link here. Uh, there's just a lot of, of support, but this is says, welcome to Apple support. 
and they have a lot of common issues. Do you forget your Apple ID? Do you need Apple repair? Are you having issues with billing and subscriptions? And when you identify, click on the specific product, uh, it will take you to the support information and you can search support for whatever you want as well. So that's Apple's site. Uh, we'll take a look at, at each of them briefly and then we can go back and look at a few others that, that we might want to in detail. Now, Apple gives you a 90 day warranty that includes phone support from Apple and you can extend that with a plan from Apple called Apple Care uh, to two years on smartphones and tablets and three years on Mac computers and includes unlimited support and product replacement for that period of time if they can't get it working. Okay. Another popular brand, Samsung, and I've used their remote support with a smart TV. I don't know if anybody actually makes dumb TVs anymore, but all of our TVs are smart and connect up to the internet. But Samsung has a remote support service that's included with their products. I tried to find out how long they will support a product with remote service, and there doesn't seem to be any information that I could find on it. But here's remote support for your phones, tablets, and smart TVs can get you, they'll, they'll help you with setting up your Google and Samsung account. Uh, they'll help you with software and application updates with backups and factory resets and with some day-to-day -day tasks about uh, setting up and, and working with email tasks. And they can actually walk you through a live screen and, and they connect you with a Samsung uh, a Care Pro uh, just as if you had somebody out on site. Um, they, they Basically, you have to have a version of Android on your smartphone, an internet connection, and they have an app, and they'll help you learn how to install that, but they have an app called Smart Tutor that you can download from the Google Play Store for your Android device, but it's actually the support link is included in settings for smart TVs. And then they have frequently asked questions and you can access the, the support options on the site as well. And you can search for support. So that's Samsung, uh, really good. Google, Google has a support on all of their products, but Google does not typically provide live support unless you have a Google uh, G Suite, which is their business account. You can have a G Suite as an individual, but uh, it, it costs money and that they provide support for Google services on that. But the, uh, typically Google has a great deal of self-support. So if you have questions about your account or Chrome or YouTube, uh, Google just has a tremendous. Again, you can see it says support google.com very similar to what Apple some are pretty easy like this some are are a little more complicated uh, but but the the links on my page will take you to all of these and just a lot of things Google pay I had Google uh, internet service when I was living uh, in another state and they had technical support for that uh, so they have a lot of tools here for you to get help on Google products okay Microsoft Microsoft has a support microsoft.com page and they have all of their products here on Microsoft, Microsoft Edge, their web browser, if you have a Surface device and Microsoft offers uh, a warranty when you buy a Surface computer from them and they also offer an extended support plan for you as well that includes live uh, phone support when you buy a product from them. So their store and they sell products is very similar to Apple's model from buying products from them. Uh, those tend to be the major manufacturers of, of products. Let's take a look at, at Costco. Costco's got concierge service. You can ask Costco in their store, you can ask their customer service desk, you can call them. Uh, it's available toll free seven days a week, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific time. Good for us on the West Coast. Okay, it's free. You actually will speak with a technician. They'll help you. They'll help you get troubleshooting. They'll actually contact the manufacturer for you if, if necessary, if they don't have the answer and they're trying to get an answer on a product. Um, and you can get help from on warranty. They have bilingual agents. Uh, they handle them in the U.S., 
Um, right now, it's available exclusively for U.S. Costco members. Costco does have stores in other countries, but right now it's just available in the U.S. And they cover things like television, uh, displays, projectors, computers, and the products that are eligible uh, and get uh, are for technical support are here. And they have products that include a two-year warranty, certain things they do. So uh, they, they will automatically extend the warranty for things like televisions, projectors, computers, and major appliances. Um, and, uh, but they might have specific computers that might not have it, like Apple, I don't think they do, but all their, their windows, they do. So they, they give you this and you can always find out what's available. It's a service that's part of your membership. So, so I recommend you take advantage of it. Okay, tech support for life uh, by Crutchfield. If you buy a product from them, they will support it for life. They don't replace it necessarily or covered under product replacement, but they will provide you with live technical support from their experts. So you basically just can call them and they sell things like car audio, home audio, uh, some televisions, wireless headphones, uh, things for boats, cameras, pro audio, uh, and, and they just have a lot of it. They're, they're one of the best kept secrets for technical support for their types of products because there's no extra charge for it. Their prices are very competitive and they will provide you help with, uh, especially help with how to use your product, how to solve a problem, how to find out if it's broken or, or if it's just something you're not doing right. And they provide a lot of resources for, for people and they've got a, a long-standing reputation for really doing that. And they now are giving you free two-day shipping to California. They tend to be based in Virginia, but, but their shipping to California is really good. Okay, uh, I buy my cameras usually from Crutchfield because of their support. Okay, Best Buy. Best Buy has a product called Total Tech Support, and they have discounted and services and support for the, everything they sell. Uh, you can chat with an agent, uh, you can schedule an appointment uh, when you have support, and they sometimes will come out on site. Depends on the product, uh, but you typically will have to purchase this for a membership, and it may depend on what product you have and how many products you have, what the membership includes for it. Some of you may have this already and use it. Some of you may have tried it for a while. But uh, typically, it covers things for a certain period of time, just like the Apple and Microsoft and Costco services do. Hewlett Packard provides care packs for products you purchase that are Hewlett Packards. Uh, so they have product categories. They include accessories, desktops, printers, monitors, scanners, other things that you might buy from Hewlett Packard. And they have care packs for laptops. Uh, desktops, printers, and for small businesses that might have uh, bundles of products for them. So they have their care packs that basically help you avoid uh, unexpected repairs. Um, so that if you don't use it, for, they're typically three years, and if you don't use it, they'll refund the whole price of the care pack to you if you don't use it at all. So they provide it, particularly laptops. Laptops can get banged around and damaged more than desktops do. So uh, I always recommend people that have a laptop of any kind purchase uh, some kind of a protection plan, extended prote uh, support plan. Now here's Dell's site. They offer services and you can see this little chat window that pops out uh, that says they can chat live with a Dell expert. I can call, I can email. That's basically to help me understand. These are their support services for home. They, they include things on, for your PC. They have a premium support plus premium support, accidental damage replacement, help you choose. Uh, and you're not sure, you can call them. And the, the premium support includes getting rid of viruses. Most of the support plans do. Uh, accidental repair, drops, spills, or electrical surges. Um, personalized tw support 24 seven and it's available all over the world or they can even do on-site support if you need to. So they, they show their support plans here and usually a lot of services offer warranties. You see what warranty, because there's technical support through phone and online and hardware reported. It varies depending on the product, but the premium support 
uh, includes all of these additional services and Premium Pro Support Plus includes some other things like so help with software to set data back up, parental controls, uh, repairs for accidental damages, um, and other tools that are available to you. So um, you'll typically get what you pay for when it comes to support. But if you buy a product from Dell, this is one of the options that's available for you. And AT&T, they have support uh, for AT&T cellular services, all the cellular companies, AT&T, I'm just showing them here, but Verizon and others, but AT&T and a lot of these companies, they, they do other things now. AT&T, the company that owns them also runs HBO Max and they provide UVerse and they provide DirecTV. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of different services you might get from one company that you might not necessarily think about saying, wait a second, maybe I can bundle this together. They all like bundles because they, they keep you uh, with that service over more, uh, a longer period of time. Um, Spectrum has support. Spectrum is now uh, supporting cellular services. Spectrum in our area has retail stores. So it is possible to get help within a retail store. They're busy uh, right now, and so, uh, but it's possible to schedule appointments, and they offer services uh, beyond just uh, their internet. They offer, obviously, TV, voice, mobile, and they'll typically help you with solving any problem, getting any of your devices connected up to the internet, uh, and or any issues you've got with TV, and they do have technicians that will come out to your home uh, to make sure that your service, Fios and, and others do this in a similar fashion. Google, for their internet, their service, Google, Wi-Fi, um, does that as well. And Office Depot is another source of service, and Staples, they're another one that do it. They provide contracts that you can get, if, even if you, I don't know if you have to buy the product from them or not, but, but they will help you sometimes, and if the product is fairly recent, uh, or you, you, it's something that they uh, can inspect or something, they will oftentimes sign up a product for technical support, even though you didn't purchase it through them. Uh, so Office Depot, Staples are, are some options for, for that. Uh, and they've got technology services in store. Uh, they've got te uh, on-site technicians, 24-7 remote. Um, and so they're available as a service provider to help you do it. And they oftentimes offer uh, shipping. Some, one of the service options that companies offer is that if they can't send a technician out to you, they will send you a replacement product. Spectrum did this with my cable box recently is that they didn't send a technician out, but they shipped me a new cable box with free return shipping. And so uh, that's a lot of times a service approach that companies will do as well. And then Amazon, okay. Amazon makes a lot of devices. Uh, they have smart home devices. They have the Echo family. They have Kindle readers. They have Amazon Prime too, but, but this is their device support uh, that, and you can get help from Amazon. I actually was able to call Amazon to get help with my uh, Alexa uh, device that, that had questions about it integrating with a third party smart home feature. And so they do have things, but they also have things like uh, ac video accidental purchase. Um, you, you can cancel something if you do, didn't want to purchase it. You can cancel music, your Kindle. But, but Amazon is actually becoming a very big device manufacturer uh, because they are making a lot of physical products as well. So these are, this is a, a, a pretty broad range of services and options. So um, obviously, if you own something already and you want to get it under support, I'd recommend looking at, at Staples and Office Depot, or there are even local technicians that advertise in, in the newspapers, uh, or if you've got a friend that refers somebody, but getting live technical support is expensive. It's, these are not inexpensive services. And so uh, taking advantage of plans that they might seem, oh, I don't want to subscribe to that. But since technology is ubiquitous, it's so much a part of our daily lives, when it's not working right, it can really get in your way. And if you're running a small business or you're providing services to people or you're, you're doing other things, 
making sure it's working right all the time is really helpful. Uh, and, and having that extra tool available can really give you uh, additional capabilities. And wrapping up, uh, consider when you purchase a product, the support aspects of it. Who's going to provide support? When is it available? Where is it available? And how long that support will be available? If it's okay to just get it under warranty, that's fine. But if you're saying, gee, I'd really like ongoing support for this product. Uh, do you have a budget for support? We got some great comments, you know, in terms of these support plans compared to getting individual uh, per incident type support when you need a response are great. And the support plans give you one place to go. And as a last resort, uh, it's not necessarily the last resort. Sometimes it can be the best choice. Sometimes it's easier and simpler and more economical to replace the technology you've got uh, because sometimes you can't get support. You notice that HP, Apple, Dell, a lot of these companies, they have support plans for three years and they don't go beyond three years. And the reason they don't go beyond three years is that the incident of hardware and software uh, issues become greater the older the technology becomes. And so uh, as we keep technology for a longer period of time, because I mean, we don't wanna to have to buy new technology all the time, but, but the longer it, it has the life of the technology, the more challenging it can sometimes be for getting support on it. But I just wanted to wrap up a little bit with that uh, and give you some closing advice on what to do. Try and keep the technology range of vendors you deal with uh, to a smaller group as much as possible. Uh, that'll make it easier for you to understand. And, and if you, and I don't recommend people switch technologies uh, a lot. You'll hear a lot of people say, oh, well, this one's better than that one. Uh, everybody has a personal need and a personal choice that's going to make most, the most sense for them. And learning a new technology is time consuming and frustrating. So if you're familiar with something already, find a way to, to be able to stay within the same family uh, if it's possible to, to learn how to use it because it's gonna make learning uh, incremental as opposed to just having a bunch of new stuff dumped on you all at once.